there is one game we all play, and that game is called Real Life. Not everyone is good at it, but some of us are. Real Life is an open world game with endless possibilities. And after all, only the uncultured spend their day-to-day -day life in just one country. So join me in my life of leisure as I explore the best games for the handheld around the world. The Super Mario Land series on the original Game Boy differs from the other Super Mario platformers in many ways. Thankfully for a nice change of pace, the entire trilogy ditches the boring Mario vs Bowser, Mushroom Kingdom, Groundhog Day repetitive Popeye ripoff of a story. In my last episode, we looked at the first Super Mario Land game, in which Mario ventured into Sarasa Land in order to rescue Princess Daisy from the evil alien Tatanga. Today, we look at the game's sequel, Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, which was released worldwide between 1992 and 1993. The story of Super Mario Land 2 continues straight where the first game left off. While Mario was away in Sarasa Land fighting against the Tanga, a completely new foe, Wario, put an evil spell over Mario and his world. Hold on one second. Since when did bloody Super Mario own his own castle? And in his own country as well? I have played all the prequels and I do not remember him getting a castle at any point. Isn't he supposed to be a plumber from Italy anyway? I'm all for changes in story, but what the hell is with this massive bloody plot hole? The only logic I can draw upon all of this is that Mario has saved all those coins he collected along his adventures and has slowly become the Donald Trump of the Mushroom Kingdom. It's time to make the Mushroom Kingdom great again. Anyway, this Wario fellow brainwashed all the inhabitants into believing Wario is their master and Mario is their enemy. Apparently Wario's motives behind this sudden attack on Mario's castle was his desire to have a palace of his own. Mario must travel through his land and collect the six golden coins in order to open the magic seal Wario has placed on his castle. Only then can he defeat Wario. It turns out that a different design team worked on this game to the other Mario games and allegedly Wario's design arose from the team's distaste of making a game based around someone else's character. The creation of Wario allowed them a character of their own to symbolise their situation. Wario is portrayed as a caricature of Mario. He has huge muscular arms, short stubby legs and a larger, pointier, zigzagging moustache. He also wears a plumber's outfit, however with a yellow and purple colour scheme. Official Nintendo lore states that Wario was a childhood rival to Mario and Luigi, who became jealous after their success. After playing the first Mario Land game, the first thing you will notice about the sequel is the massive upgrade in graphics. Everything is bigger and more detailed. Mario's sprite and the question mark blocks now look a lot like the newest console Mario game at the time, Super Mario World. Although the sprites are all much bigger, they are sized just right really, as they are still small enough not to clutter the small Game Boy screen. The game is also much larger than its prequel, and now features a world map like in Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World. The use of this map differs and innovates however, as you can use it to freely traverse between the six different zones included within the game. That's right, I said zones, rather than worlds like in other Mario games. Maybe the creator, Gunpei Yokoi, had been playing too much Sonic the Hedgehog when making the game, as many of the game's stages contain both higher and lower areas, instead of having the stages all at a single level. Anyway, with the world map it is nice, as you can move between these zones at your own leisure. You can beat them in any order you choose, rather than having to go through them in a set order. It's a small touch, but one that's appreciated, as non-linear gameplay can be great when done right. Anyway, let us take a look at these six zones. Each feature a different theme, and some of them are wildly different from other Mario games. You have the Turtle Zone, which contains the typical water levels, the Mario Zone, which is a large robotic mechanical theme level that takes place in a sculpture of Mario's likeness, the Macro Zone, which appears to be a giant house, the Pumpkin Zone, in which is a Halloween themed and features enemies from Japanese folklore, 
the tree zone, which is you play through levels in which you climb a massive tree, and my personal favourite, the space zone, in which Mario wears a space suit and lets you float around as high as you want whenever you jump. Whilst the zones themselves are still somewhat short, containing around three to five levels each, this is still a massive improvement over the tiny scale of the first Super Mario Land game. Some of the levels even contain hidden exits, which encourage you to backtrack. In order to obtain the six golden coins, Mario can obtain each one by defeating the bosses located at the end of each zone. In order to defeat the boss of each area, you must jump on top of each one of them three times. The bosses include a sewer rat, which runs between drain pipes, which also has an attack, in which you can dive at you from the ceiling, a witch, in which has magic powers, who can send lids flying off of her cauldrons, a bird, in which as you would expect, flies at you and has diving attacks, and an octopus in an underwater battle, which sends its bloody offspring after you. Amongst my favourite boss fights in the game is against the three little pigs. Each have their houses made of various materials as you would expect, but this fight is a bit longer as you have to jump on each of their heads three times to win. Even Tatanga makes a return to the game, who is waiting for you in Space Zone, so you can give him a second bashing for causing you all that trouble back in Sarasaland. You can receive a little help in your quest with the aid of the classic Mario staple of Power Ups. The traditional mushroom and fire flower are back, whilst the game introduces a new one that hasn't been brought back since Rabbit Mario. Whenever Mario collects a carrot, he transforms into Rabbit Mario, who has the ability to gently float around the level. Anyway, after ploughing through the zones, beating the bosses and obtaining the six golden coins, it is time to go to Wario's castle. This level is a pleasure to traverse. It is long, it is difficult, and even features brand new music. This level is so different from the others, it kind of feels like you are no longer playing a Mario game, and have somehow got transported into a Castlevania game. Running through this tricky gauntlet really helps to build up anticipation for the final battle against Wario. When you finally find Wario sitting in his throne, you commence a boss battle against him. Wario uses every trick in the Mario book to try and defeat you. This battle is over three stages. First you must defeat regular Wario, then he grabs a carrot and you must defeat rabbit Wario, then he finally grabs a fire flower and you must dodge fireballs and defeat fire Wario. A fun and innovative end fight which is a lovely change from Mario's constant battles with Bowser. If you have seen my previous video, you can clearly see that Super Mario Land 2 six golden coins is a quantum leap in terms of everything compared to its prequel Super Mario Land. Everything in the game is just bigger and better and the game completely differs from every other Mario game within the Mario side scrolling series. If you've not already got this one then I strongly urge you to purchase this one and add it to your collection. Whether you want to play it on the original Game Boy or you want to download it on the 3DS eShop, this is a must-have game to own. So go out and buy it. Cheerio!